Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I'm back with you again, and this is going to be the last video for the well drilling shaft, uh, the repair job that I'm doing. I finally got my material in for the last piece that I got a machine. And I uh, thought I'd show it with you because uh, it just came in. I actually ordered it last week, but uh, it took a few days because I had them do a little something extra for me. But uh, once again, that's the piece that I got to build. Uh, this isn't the, uh, this is actually off of a different shaft. This, this has got a different bore size here, but it's very similar to this, is, uh, is what I'm going to build. And what I needed was a piece of five and a half inch OD material. I was looking for a piece of tubing. And uh, I need a piece of uh, a tubing that had like a two inch ID with a five and a half OD. And I couldn't quite find it. They, I couldn't find somebody with that uh, wall thickness that I needed. So what I did was uh, one of my favorite suppliers that I like to use is m and Metals. They're out in Texas. And they're kind of, uh, they're well known for their centrifugal cast um, cast iron, bronze, and stainless. They've got just about any size you can imagine. And they also stock a lot of uh, uh, 1018 and 4140 and stainless and uh, that kind of stuff. So I gave them a call and uh, told them what I was looking for. I needed a piece of two by five and a half, 10 inches long. And uh, this is what I got right here. And what it is, it's a piece of five and a half, and it's got a two inch drill hole all the way through there. And that, that's just kind of kind of helped me, uh, so I ain't got so much work to do on my end. You know, I'm, I'm always used to uh, doing this kind of stuff myself, and it was actually, it was actually pretty nice having somebody do something, you know, it's, this kind of stuff is usually what I have to do, you know, drill a hole through there because I can't find a piece of stock, but um, she gave me a quote on the piece of material and oh, she told me, she's like, well, we can give, we got it five and a half. And uh, she said, well, we can put a hole, a two inch hole for, uh, through it for you if you want. I said, well, how much are you gonna charge me for that? And uh, she worked up the quote and it was only 40 bucks to, uh, pop the two inch hole through there. So I decided to go ahead and, and let them do that. And it's just gonna make it a little easier on my end. I don't have so much drilling that I gotta do. <clears throat> but, uh, so this is a piece of five and a half OD, uh, 1018 hot roll. And this is what I'm gonna use to build this piece right here. And it's, uh, it's 10 inches long. I think I got the camera. I've got just the the one that I measured was the uh, the old one that I've already built. I built one in the past, and it actually finishes 10 inches long. It's a little bit longer than this one here, but it's going to have a big flange on one side, and that's why I needed the five and a half. So that's it right here. And uh, you know, the other thing I got to do is I got to put the double keyway. This is going to slide onto the uh, the shaft that I've already showed in the other videos, the ones that I that I already repaired it, and I put two new keyways in it. So uh, I've got to broach a double keyway inside this bore, and I will uh, show you how I'm going to do that. Uh, there's the broach plug I'm going to use. Uh, it's got a half inch, uh, it's got half inch keyways, and what I'm going to do is modify this this broach plug. I'm going to flip this thing over. I'm going to mill me another keyway down it so that it will uh, accept a half inch key. And what I'll do, stick that in there. I broach my first key and I'll spin it around, drop it back in there. And I'll actually be able to drop a half inch key in there. And then that will put me 180 degrees off of the uh, first key that I, that I broached. So I got to modify that. That'll be part of the job. And I got a lot of, lot of turning to do on this thing right here. And 
I decided I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, the Monarch lathe this time because I've had a few people ask me, hey, when we're we going to get to see the Monarch run. So I figured this is going to be a a nice piece to uh, machine in the Monarch. You know, it's I got to do some heavy cutting, and that that Monarch will uh, work good to uh, machine this piece here. So what I I, I was going to uh, show you what I did I added me an extra light back here above the monarch and it's uh, it kind of lit it up a little bit better because I, I kind of had a hard time seeing back here and uh, I just put that up yesterday there there was another light fixture right there that was broken whenever that sheetrock fell and so I went ahead and decided to put it right there above the monarch so it kind of helped light it up a little bit better and uh, that's going to help me a lot right there. And before I get started on this job, I kind of like to, I've been wanting to clean this machine up and I just haven't taken the time to do it yet, but I kind of like to give it a little bit of wipe down. I, I haven't used it in a while. You can see the cobwebs right there on it, but it's got a little bit of dust on it and, and stuff. I'd kind of like to give it a little wipe down and I want to check the sump because this is the only lathe that I've got that I've ever actually ever run that's got the uh, the coolant pump that's the coolant pump right there I got to hook the hose back up and it works so I'm thinking about using some flood coolant on this job so I need to check that sump and see what kind of condition it's in and then uh, might have to do a little cleaning and I'll mix me up some more uh, uh, you know soluble oil for some flood coolant and see if it works but I just want to get it kind of wiped down a little bit, re-oiled everything, and then I'll, I'll uh, get back to the job. And, uh, well, I got you. I figured I'd show you one more thing that's, that I'm going to be working on here pretty soon. It's going to be another, another job that I'm doing. Man, it's hot out here. cousin of mine me and him are really good friends and and uh, we've always done a lot to help each other out he's got an old Dodge truck that he's working on and this is the uh, the, the shackle for the uh, rear leaf, leaf spring and he's wanting to lower the truck and they don't build these they don't have an aftermarket for these for uh, lowering that rear end so he asked me if I could build him a couple of these for his truck. I, I want to say it's a 86 Dodge Ram. So I told him, yeah, that ain't, that ain't nothing to it. He actually sent me a link to uh, some other aftermarket uh, shackle hangers that that are, uh, you know, they're all fabricated and uh, they, there's really nothing to it. I'm gonna have my buddy at the welding shop share me some strips out of out of uh, whatever gauge this is. It's about 3 16ths, I believe. And uh, I'm gonna. I got some tubing that I'll actually build, uh, make these out of. You know, I'll bore it. And uh, we got bushes. They act, these actually just arrived right before I started filming. Uh, FedEx showed up with that. That's the bushings that he bought to go in these. I haven't even opened it up yet to look at them. But so anyway, this is going to be uh, another job that I'll do here shortly, and I'll I'll film it also. I think it'll be pretty cool. Uh, get my buddy to uh, fe uh, shear me up the pieces that I need and I'll weld it all together and make sure it's machined for the bushing to press in. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and see what kind of bushings he got. I believe it's the uh, polyurethane made by Energy Suspension. And that's what they are. Energy susp uh, Suspension leaf spring bushing kit so that'll be the uh, that'll be the bushings that's going to be the bushings that we install in this piece right here so that's that's going to be pretty simple right there these are going to be a little forgiving you know and just the bolt goes to it the sleeves go through here yeah so 
So that's going to be another job that uh, I'm going to do here in a little while. And hopefully you guys will be able to see it. So anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna work on the, the Monarch and get it ready for this job. And I'll show you how I machine this piece. Want to see what I just found? Took the top off the uh, coolant tray. <laughs> There's the fun mess that I get to clean up. Look at that crap, man. That's, uh, that's several years of old coolant and chips and crud and cutting oil. All sunk down in there and to create one big nasty mess. So, I'm going to get that thing cleaned up before I uh, get started on this job because I really want to use my coolant but the, that's I haven't used the coolant on this machine and I mean it's been a long time I, if I had to guess probably four or five years since I used it but it's uh, all the water looks like it's dried up it's just it's just cutting oil and and a bunch of muck just left down in there so I gotta get busy I'm part way there I got all the crap cleaned out of there and that's what it looks like halfway cleaned up i've got some industrial cleaner mixed up and i'm going to give her a wipe down get all the oil out of it i just thought i'd give you a little update on what i've been up to been getting this lady cleaned up there it is it's uh i'm not done yet but i have been i decided to go ahead and kind of wipe her down you can see underneath that that oily mess that there was some old green paint <laughs> but I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of giving it a light cleanup. I'm not going, I'm not doing a full detail on this thing, but it does. You can see, like right there, I haven't got the bottom. You can see how dirty. That's, that's the way the rest of all this looked. But it, it's, it is looking a lot better. And uh, this thing was originally gray before it was painted green. But just trying to give her a cleanup. Uh, I'm not done yet. I had some. Uh, visitors stopped by and talked to me for a while. I had to stop, but um, I kind of got the uh, the sump cleaned out. The uh, the junk in the bottom is basically just the, the the cleaner for me wiping all this pan out that's collecting down there, and uh, that's why I decided instead of just doing the coolant pan, go ahead and just kind of wipe the machine down some, and uh, like all this was just coated with oil and chips. And I've been just kind of wiping, and this is where I stopped whenever I had people stop by. But I want to go ahead and get all this clean. And then uh, the last thing I'll do is go ahead and soak up the rest of the crud in the bottom down there. And, uh, and that'll be clean, and then I can fill it up with some, with some fresh coolant. So it's just a little quick update on it uh, like i said i'm not doing the whole thing yet see i haven't gotten down here yet but the back of this machine here the headstock and all is cleaned up pretty good i still got to do the carriage and the taper attachment covers and all that crap so that's what i'm working on i'll have a uh, decently clean machine whenever i start this job what's up well it's actually the next day and uh still been cleaning up my monarch and I thought it had I thought I'd give you guys a uh, another little update on that this it's actually uh, turned into a full-blown cleaning up I, I thought I was just gonna wipe the machine down just kind of get a little of the surface oil off of it but the more that I wiped the further I went with it and so I've been plugging away at it pretty hard and I thought I'd show you how far I got and uh, I actually just got up off the floor. I've been underneath there trying to do some cleaning. I'm kind of wore out. It's hot. It's humid. But I'll show you what I've got done so far. It kind of looks like a different lathe now. You can actually see some of the paint. Before I started wiping it down, it was just covered in black oil and smut down there was like the pitch black 
that tray right there was just completely filled up with cutting oil and chips and crud so it's it's cleaning up pretty good I've got most of it wiped down I'm not I'm not quite finished yet but it's getting pretty close and I'm about ready to get it done I'm, I'm tired of wiping this thing down but it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while I've been putting it off I was gonna do it when I moved it down here and I never got to it but I'm doing it now I, I just want to get her cleaned up and uh, clean and it makes me feel a little bit better whenever I'm using it you know anytime you get on a, a clean machine it just it just feels nicer whenever you're when you're running it but anyway this is where I'm at now uh, just about done I got a few spots that I've that I missed I've actually been getting down inside the the bedways here I missed I forgot about this spot here right here on my truck wrench holder I forgot to wipe that so I'm gonna wipe that down but I did go ahead and decide to just kind of wipe the whole machine down and it's looking better it's more presentable I got some pig mat down in there in the sump just uh, starting to soak up the uh, the cleaner that's run down in there I'm gonna do a, a final wipe down once I get the rest of this this cleaned up it, it's looking a lot better though I'm, I'm happy with it uh, one thing I was going to point out, you know, if you've never used pig mat, that's an excellent thing to have around there, around the shop, because uh, most people just use oil dry, which works good, but it makes a mess, especially if you leave it down at tracks. You know, pig mat uh, soaks up everything. That's the universal, so it soaks up water and oil and coolant, whatever. You can get the white ones that just soak up just oil. So I've got a roll of those, and it's actually right there. And uh, in case you're curious what I'm using to clean the machine with, that's what I use there. Uh, Castro Clean 36 something. I, I don't remember what that number is. It's, but we bought that a while back and you just, you pour it a little bit in a bucket, fill it up with water, it dilutes and, and it it's a really good uh, cleaner. You just don't want to get it all of your hands. I, I actually use those uh, nitrile gloves. Keep it off my skin because it will burn you. So that's just another quick update. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the, the last that I need to get done. And I'll get it, I'll get the ways oil down again. I might even fire it up and uh, run it. But uh, oh, one last thing, here's, this is another uh, guard that goes on the back side of the taper attachment and it used to be on the machine and I, I i took it off when it was at the other shop because it was it was in the way Th this lathe used to sit between two other lathes i had the victor which is this one used to sit over here and then behind it over here was the ac return and uh i didn't have a lot of room in there to work the ac return so i ended up just taking that off and there's two pins that hold it on right there i think one of the pins is actually inside there because I must have stuck it in there I got to pull that out but I'm missing another one so I've got to make another pin for the other side and then that slides on to the the back of the tape the taper attachment back there and it's more of like a uh, uh, a coolant uh, splash guard there it helps the coolant fall down into the uh, the bed so I got to get that cleaned up too and uh, I don't know if I'll make the pins I need to get that mounted on but we'll see so anyway there's there's another little quick update on that I'm gonna get her finished up and uh, I'll see you shortly all right I got it finally cleaned up got the chip pan cleaned out and that's what it's supposed to look like whenever it's cleaned out and empty of course I can't tell you how long it's been since I seen that thing that clean I mean long time and it's probably gonna be a long time again the next time I clean it out but uh that's what it's supposed to look like but I'm getting ready to mix up some uh, flood coolant and put in there there's the uh, the cover for the the sump there I'm getting ready to fill it up with some coolant all right I just mixed up my flood coolant 
and poured her in. That's uh, about uh, probably about eight gallons of uh, flood coolant. And the uh, the particular brand that I've got is the uh, Mobile. I believe it's called Mobile Cut 102. That's the last stuff that I got. So I just got to uh, I'm gonna set the chip pan down in there, and uh, I'm gonna reoil the ways. I'm gonna test that sucker out, see if it still works. All right, guys, I'm getting ready to uh, fire up the Monarch, and I'm about to see if this coolant pump works. It's been a long time since I've turned it on, and I hope that it does. And I've got the machine cleaned up the way I want. I even swept the floor up, got that cleaned up. There's the uh, chip pan, got it sitting down in there. Just put in a bunch of uh, soluble coolant. I hooked the hose back up because it had come off. Uh, by the way, that is something that I do need to do. All those hoses, I need to re uh, replace those. They've gotten really old and, and worn out and uh, that's going to be a future project. I need to replace those hoses down there, but I'm hoping that they're they're still good enough to use now. Uh, I just put, you know, I cleaned the, the ways down real good. And I put some fresh whey oil on the ways. This is my can that I use. I, I got it marked there, whey oil. And uh, moved the carriage down. And I have not fired this pump up yet. So, um... I don't know if it's going to work. I didn't test it before I turned the video on. I'm about to turn it on now and see if it works. And I hope it does because the last time I used it, it worked fine. So we're about to find out. I'm going to I'm going to uh, get you mounted up on the uh, blast cabinet right here. I hope you guys can see everything there. All right. I think you're good to go. Cool pump on here. Pump's running. I can hear it running. Here we go. open the valve and nothing I know it used to take a few seconds to get there but this isn't right it's not working Alright, so I got something else I got to check out. It's not working. Alright, so I got some more to, to do. I got to find out why this pump ain't working. So, uh, let me work on this and I'll, uh, if I get it fixed, I'll show you. Alright. You see I got a little dripping now. Um, what I did, I took my air hose. I was thinking maybe I've got a blockage down here. So I blew through there. And I started getting a little bit of cooling out of it. I'm going to try it again and see if that helps. I'm going to open it up. I got my glasses on. But Definitely coming out at the bottom. Alright, try it again.
I think it's kind of clogged up in there. Every, you know, the, the sump was in such bad shape that uh, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe those lines are, are clogged up too. I just had it running just a second ago. trying to make me look bad. I don't know if I'm if I'm not getting the prime right. I mean I've never had a problem in the past and it always just came on at work. <laughs> now it's working. Yeah. And it's flowing good too. Either, either I didn't have the system primed or I had some crud in there just blocking it up, but it, it, I think it finally primed itself up and it's flowing good. Yeah, it's doing good now. And you can see my valve here. This I got a little leak right here. You know, this is this is really old stuff right here. I mean, this has been on this machine since since uh, my granddad bought it, but. It's working, and I got flood cooling on the lathe. Yeah, I think I just had to have it. I had to get it primed up because I can barely hear that motor running now. That's good. Got flood coolant now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pump off. All of this right here really just needs to be replaced. So, you know, I got some leaking down here, leaking at that valve. So that'll be, you know, in the future, I might mess with that. But right now I'm not really worried about it. The uh, machine's going to capture most of the coolant, and if I get a little splash around, I'm not worried about it. All right. So we got uh, flood coolant. I'll go ahead and fire it up. You can see it run. Put it in high gear. It's 420. It'll go up to 
700, but I don't really ever run it that fast. That's, that's about the fast I ever run it. Got the feet on. There's a carriage feed, and I think I'm at about 5,000. 5,000 feet there. This is a uh, this is a CY model. It's got the lead screw reverse lever right here. I'm gonna drop it down down a little bit slower. So if you're threading, all right, got it engaged, right? It's feeding. Pull this one up, you're in neutral. If you, if you don't want to disengage the half nuts, bring that up and it's going to reverse itself and it's going to stay engaged all the time. Bring your pairs back down to where you start your thread. Put it in neutral, adjust your cross slide, your compound, drop it back in and it's just going to continue to cut. So, there's a couple little features about the machine. The, uh, the brake, the brake doesn't work too good anymore. You know, you're supposed to be able to just pull up on this clutch lever and stop it, but it, I guess it's worn out. Now, I've never been into it to inspect it, but um, usually I just kind of pull up on this a little bit, put my hand on the chuck, and it slows it down. That's how I'm used to running this machine. And that's about it. I'm going to check this coolant one more time. We got it. There it is. Pump off, turn the machine off. So there's the monarch. Get you where you can see me. So I got her pretty well cleaned up the way I want to. Like I said, I didn't do a full detail in this thing. You know, there's there's places that are still dirty on here, but I feel a whole lot better. This this machine is finally cleaned off some, and I got the, I got the sump cleaned out. The coolant's finally working, and uh, it's ready to run. So the uh, the piece of material that I already showed you uh, in the first part of the video, I'm going to do that in this machine here. So. I guess that's it for now. Got the Monarch running. That's what I wanted to show in this. And I'm happy with it. And I'll see you guys soon, all right? Later. All right, so the, uh, the video didn't really
quite turn out to be what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be uh, chucking up that piece of stock and start machining, but it kind of led into other things. So it it really just it involved the Monarch. You know, I got her cleaned up, which is what I wanted to do anyway. And I thought this was a good time to get her cleaned up. I just I, I didn't think I was going to go into that much detail in getting her cleaned up, but it really needed it. And uh, so, you know, the more I started working on it, the more I wanted to clean it. And so I just continued to wipe it down and get it cleaned up. So that's what it is. You know, it it is what it is, and that's what it that's what I did. I got it cleaned up, and now I'm ready to use it. I got the coolant pump working got coolant in it fresh coolant and the coolant pumps working good now so you know it'll it'll be ready for me to do some uh, machining on it when I want to do some heavy cutting or drilling so it's ready to roll and, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of happy that I did it I've been wanting to clean that lathe up for a while and I've been putting it off and putting it off and honestly I think the last time that I cleaned that and I and I remember cleaning it before it had to have been 10 years ago at least I mean maybe more than that but it was probably 10 years and you know with with these kind of machines in the shop that we've always run you know in a job shop your machines are gonna get dirty they're gonna get nasty I use a lot of cutting oil you know that dark heavy cutting oil when you're using cutting oil, whenever you're doing your machining and you're blowing it off, it mists into the air. It gets on all the machines, puts a little film on it. That film starts collecting all the dust and the sediment in the air. And before you know it, your machine is just completely filthy. And that's, that's one of the things that you just got to contend with whenever you have machinery, especially in a shop like mine. And... So every sound, every now and then, you just gotta you gotta take a little time and and uh, clean it clean it up, and that's what I did. Uh, like I said, I wasn't expecting to clean it up, but I just decided that it was time to do it, and I kept going with it, and I got it cleaned up. So I got it cleaned up real good, and uh, I got a few more places on it that really needs to be cleaned that I get to on the the back side down there on the on the. The column the foot you know I didn't clean that but my uh, my goal is to maybe this winter I really want to put a new paint job on that lathe and it's something that I've always wanted to do so that might be a, fu a future project that I do is uh, to repaint the lathe but for now it's cleaned up and, and I'm happy with it and it'll be just a little bit more enjoyable to run now. You go over there, you know, I don't have to worry about all that oil and, and crud all over it. I got a coolant pump that works, so I'll be able to use that when I need to, when I want to do some heavy machining, or if I want to do some heavy drilling, I can go over to that lathe and use that and have some uh, flood coolant. Uh, you know, a couple more things that I wanted to say about it was uh, since I've been focused on that lathe, here the past couple days is you know I, I went down there and talked to my dad you know he just lives a few hours down from me uh, and that's where our old shop is I told him I was getting the monarch cleaned up and started talking to him and you think back and sometimes you wish you could you could have said some of the things or talked about some of the things that you really wanted to with your family that uh, you don't that you don't now have the opportunity to do. My granddad is gone, he's passed, and uh, my granddad was the one who bought that lathe. He bought that Monarch, and I just talked to my dad about this because I wanted to uh, make sure I had all the facts, but my granddad bought that Monarch back in the early 80s. My dad cannot remember the exact year but he said it was the early 80s when he bought it and he thinks he paid $3,000 for it. He bought it from 
another machine shop over in Mobile, Alabama. And my granddad wanted it because he worked out the Navy base. He worked for NARF. They had a big machine shop out there. They did a lot of work. And uh, he was a foreman out there. And many of the lathes that they had out there was Monarch. And Monarch is an excellent lathe. They, they, made, a, they made a really a fine lathe to run. And that was what my granddad was used to running. So I'm assuming that he found this lathe for sale. So him and my dad went over there and looked at it. And my granddad bought it. He paid him $3,000 for it. They brought it home. And it's an excellent lathe. It's always been a good lathe. I've got memories of a kid. You know, I was, I was just young. I mean, it's some of my earliest memories uh, coming down there to the shop and walking in the door and remember seeing that lathe just in the doorway along the back wall and watching my granddad run that lathe. You know, and when I think back on it, that's, that's some really good memories to have. And it, it's some of those great memories that I have of my granddad. He was a machinist and I'm doing what he did. The same exact kind of work that, that he's doing. And, and I remember seeing my granddad run that lathe. And it's just a good feeling to still have that, you know? So my granddad bought it. He bought it for our shop. He ran it, my dad ran it. And it's always been a part of our shop. And it's, it's, it's an excellent machine. It's done some good work for us. And I've been in our business now for 16 years. And I've run that machine quite a bit myself and learned a lot on it too. So it's just, it, it makes me feel, it makes me feel good to still have some of the machines, especially the Monarch, that, that was something that my granddad acquired for our shop that he bought. It did a lot of work, you know, a lot of money was probably made off that machine and it's still serving us. And I want to say that it was, I remember looking up the, uh, the, the number, the serial number that stamped on the ways and it's either 41 or 42 is when that machine was built. So you got to think, you know, that, that machine right there is 70 plus years old and it still runs great. It's still accurate. There's, there's very little wrong with it. It's just a nice piece of machinery to have around the shop and I'm glad that I have it and I'm thankful for it. And I'm thankful for my dad uh, letting me keep it because my dad is a big part of what you see in this shop and what I've already shown you. He's the one that let me keep the machinery that we have, that we brought down here to my place and that I have around here that, and, and what I'm using to, uh, to do the work that I do and just to, to continue with our shop. So that's just a, that's a nice, the memories that I have of that machine is just really, it's something really nice that I have inside. And I thought it was enjoyable to show you guys me cleaning it up and, and not that anything was wrong with it, but it was just dirty and I wanted to get it cleaned up. And, and I decided this was the time I needed to get it cleaned up. So I thought I'd show you guys that. And now it's cleaned up. I feel better about it. Now I can go over there and uh, chuck some material up and start doing some cutting on it. So that's what the plan is. I, I, I actually thought that the start of this video series here was going to be that job that I showed you at the very, the very first part of it. And that piece of heavy wall tubing that I had made. So I'm going to do that in that Monarch and, and I'll show you that. But... Uh, I did more filming on just the cleaning of the Monarch and getting the coolant pump running and that kind of stuff that it, I guess it just kind of justified its own video. So 
and that's why I posted just a video on the Monarch so I hope you guys enjoyed this it's been a lot of hard work you know cleaning up a machine is not nothing fun it's something that I did a lot in my younger years growing up in the shop having to clean the machines and it's it's nothing fun but there is a bit of satisfaction that you get out of it especially when you really expect respect the the machines and the history behind them so like I said I, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will be starting on the next job real soon so you'll see that and that's it hope you guys had fun uh, I know I sweated my ass off out here trying to get that machine cleaned up but it was well worth it so I'll see you guys real soon alright later